more like the crazy nutbag right wingers and flood them with emails. <laughs> right? Because we can be as loud as they can. All right. So, um, uh, I all right. I have one. Oh, this is kind of sad. All right. I'm going to do the funny thing first. I just came from my first hearing that I've ever been to, and it was the Senate Armed Services Committee. And so I went there, and um, I was, you know, with some some vets who had been kicked out because of don't ask, don't tell. And then there's this one old general that just. I think he was just making shit up, I really do, because he had some story about um, in the Vietnam War, so the young straight guy kept getting sodomized by a commanding officer, but there was no record of it, and I don't know, but it was, he might have been making it up, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, good for him, but, <laughs> whatever, he's a good storyteller, but, um, but it was very moving to hear from the honorable service people that have been kicked out because of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and how it impacted their lives, and after being, I went to Iraq, but I went to Afghanistan as well, and Uzbekistan, and Kuwait, and a bunch of other shitholes. And so, uh, the audiences were very captive, let me put it that way. Um, and so, so anyway, um, I, I really here on behalf of my many, many gay friends who are currently serving overseas, because when I was speaking to Congressman Clyburn, who I really, I really think is an amazing icon, but one thing Sorry. he was saying, what helped the civil right, rights please. movement so much, is learning how to speak out effectively. But you know, with this issue, that's how you get your ass fired, is quite simply by speaking out. So the one thing that's been really moving for me is I've been flooded by emails from my pals over there who are gay, and they're very emotional, and they have so many questions that they're having me pass on to these congresspeople and senators. So may I share two emails that I got from them? Yes. All right, so I want to read these because I changed the names because I'm always really paranoid about outing them. And I feel like if a guy just stands next to me, he's like outed. And so, uh, <laughs> and so, so anyway, um, this I've changed all the names and the locations and stuff. And um, I, I wrote them and I said, for a speech, I really just need your words. So let's just say that the service person who's serving in Afghanistan now is named Joe. Let's just go with Joe. All right, so from Joe's partner of 10 years, uh, he writes this to me. Before Joe deployed to Iraq, we took trips to see both sets of our families. And while, while we were visiting his brother's family, and Joe's brother is in the military as well, big military family, Joe waited for a moment where he could tell his sister-in-law, we'll call her Nancy, uh, <laughs> until she was out of the room to tell his brother that um, they were, we were designating their family to be the next of kin should anything happen in Iraq. And this is his uh, third tour over there. In other words, the sister would be the one to have the uniformed officer come to their door, God forbid. And so um, the sister had 24 years as an army wife and she had heard these discussions and they just made a very brief mention of it. So one morning, five months into Joe's deployment, I got a call at 6.30 in the morning. Nancy was crying and could barely speak. It was probably only 10 or 15 seconds, but it seemed like an eternity to me. I waited for her to compose herself enough to tell me that Joe's aunt had passed away. <laughs> I know, they laugh about it now, but believe me, they were laughing then. He then says, my knees buckled. Nancy didn't know to lead with the assurance that Joe was fine. It just didn't occur to her. I've never been so angry, distraught, relieved. I don't know what really. And it had nothing to do with Nancy, it wasn't her fault, but I had, I bawled and sobbed the entire commute to work, and I had to compose myself as if nothing had happened. I couldn't even talk to one coworker about it. After Joe's return from our first six month separation in 2001, the families of deployed soldiers got together at Fort, actually I don't even want to say what the base is. Anyway, they got together to welcome home the troops. A friend of ours, a gay service member as well, held up the phone so I could at least hear what was happening from our home in San Antonio. The ceremony lasted two and a half hours. He couldn't even attend. All right, so this is from Joe, and he writes this two days ago from Afghanistan. Thank you for this. It truly touches us both. The policy, something that has given us cause to worry about for our very futures, everything to do with our futures, benefits, retirement, salary, everything, for the 10 years we've been together, continues to make us feel like illegitimate citizens. Despite our willingness to protect the very government, possibly with our lives, who legitimize this law, we feel it codifies bigotry. And I do mean we. As an army spouse, Dan shares all the risk, but receives none of the, of the support, not even the right of first notification 
in the event of my death over here. To be sure, I'm fully comfortable with you mentioning that you have a friend currently serving in Afghanistan on his third deployment who tells you that things have indeed changed for the better, but as long as this law remains on the books, there is not only the fear of being caught and losing everything, but the shame of living counter to what I know are the military's core values of living an ethical and honest life. So that guy's a little more articulate than I am. So, um, so it's interesting to then go to this hearing, and I have to tell you, I, you know, before the election, I mean, it's fun to make fun of Palin, but I was one of those people that, even though I voted for Obama, I always kind of respected McCain until this morning. I was so disappointed and let down by this man that I thought at least was intelligent, had obviously served the military with honor, questioning the man and woman who stood before him, who had been dishonorably discharged, separated, whatever they call it, and accusing them of lying, exaggerating. And there's a question he kept asking them over and over. And he was so condescending in his tone, it surprised me. He kept saying to them, wasn't don't ask, don't tell a policy in place when you joined? And they both said yes. And he said, did you not understand it? And he kept saying over and over, are you telling me that as a graduate of this school or that school that you actually didn't understand it? And both of them seemed a little caught off guard and they said, well, one guy said, actually, we didn't understand it. It was pretty vague when it was first stated. And the woman said, I understood it, but I wanted to serve so much, I knew I could serve anyway until I was kicked out. So that was a shame. Oh, and then Saxby Chambliss was there. It was super crazy. So, um, yeah, that was really fun. So since I've never been to a hearing, I, like I was clapping after people talk because I thought it was like a Broadway show. <laughs> I thought it was like Mamma Mia, like a show. Um, which they should have music. It was a little boring in some parts, frankly. And so, so anyway, um, then uh, McCain was a disappointment. Lieberman and Levin were actually pretty great. And then Chambliss started. And then he started with um, linking it to the Bible and how gay people aren't root question in the Bible and stuff. So I did something inappropriate, and I apologize to all the wonderful groups here that I'm representing, and I recommend that they disassociate from me immediately, because I sort of stood up in the front row and said, peace out, you cuckoo puff. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathy, for being here. And Joe Salmanese, where are you? You down there. We are on the same team. And I want to thank you for standing up for those soldiers that are still serving right now. You're great at telling jokes, but I want to make one thing very clear. This is not a joke. Whoa. Don't ask, don't tell is not a joking matter. It is the only law that enforces shame. And that's why, even when I was recalled to serve again, even with all of these statements that there are ulterior motives or it'd be awkward or difficult, I was accepted by my unit with open arms. Woo! 